Who amongst you remembers the Virtual On series, Mech vs. Mech, dueling it out in an enclosed 3D arena? One of my best friends growing up was a huge Sega nerd, thus my introduction to the series was through him. Call it nostalgia, but I've had a bit of a soft spot for these style of games since. And yet, I honestly haven't come across all that many 3D Mech Battle Arena games since starting I Dream of Indie Games. I'm confident they exist, but maybe I fell out of love or just haven't been paying as much attention as I should be. I think part of the issue was that this genre just seemed inherently more fun in an arcade style environment versus playing at home. Regardless, here we go, Alice Gear Aegis CS Concerto of Simulatrix, a title I will not repeat again, looks to capture some of that old magic, but with anime babes. Alright, look, you already know if you're into the cute anime girl thing, and for me, it's fine, I'm kind of indifferent, but if you were hoping for some kind of engrossing story to accompany your mech battling throughout Alice Gear, you'll likely be pretty disappointed. Not that I think many of you were clicking on this review caring all that much about the plot for this game, but there is one here at least, so you can give it that. It is the 21st century, and an alien species known as the Vice is attacking the world. This has forced humans to evacuate and inevitably brings the creation of a CS system that simulates mech battles. You'll be testing that system. Your characters are known as actresses in this game, and honestly, it's all just total nonsense. There are some text-based visual novel-like cutscenes in the story mode, but if you're anything like me, you'll be reaching for the skip button pretty early on. The game features just a few modes of play, the single player story as I mentioned, there's an online mode which is probably where this title will live or die, and then there is a shop for purchasing new gear and cosmetics for your bots, available with currency that you earn in the game, which is nice. In single player, you can take part in the aforementioned story mode, or do free battles in either teams, 1v1, or Battle Royale. The story mode takes place on a calendar hex grid, with each day representing a new battle, a new item that you can purchase, or other obstacles like a whirlwind that can move you to other locations and change your path entirely. You'll select whichever actress you wish, there are over 20 with some of them needing to be unlocked, and then it's just a matter of progressing through the days winning those battles. So just how do these battles play out? Well, combat is fairly easy for anyone to pick up and play, it's rather bare bones, but to the game's credit, your characters can be customized in a large variety of ways. Basic boosting is of course done with the left stick, though you will need to keep an eye on your boost meter so that you don't overheat. You have a few special skills, your standard shooting, a melee weapon attack, and then some of the skills are attached to your torso and your legs, which is admittedly a pretty cool idea too. You also have a shield, but it can get busted up, and of course you can do the same to your opponent's shield. I would say the best part of the combat is the ability to customize your characters with a good amount of unlockable weapons and cosmetics that can be equipped. There are bazookas, sniper guns, quicker firing pistols, all kinds of stuff to play around with. You can change the look of your actress, the colors of her, and so much more. And while all of that is neat, it just seemed like regardless of how much I attempted to make my character interesting and dynamic, the combat engine just really isn't. Most battles felt kinda dull even when I tried to spice them up even with a swap mechanic, which allows you to cycle actresses in and out. I just never found the combat all that thrilling, and I think part of the problem is I was battling AI opponents and the online servers were unavailable for me, I couldn't find any opponents. That could be a bit more interesting, but even on higher difficulties, there are a few to choose from, I just found that each battle was a real slog. They took very little skill, and at the worst, I would lose once or twice before conquering it. And that was kind of my ultimate takeaway with this game, the story mode just isn't enthralling enough to carry the whole experience, we're going to need an online community for this one to have any prayer of lasting. Visually, Alice Gear has a familiar bright and colorful anime style that looks nice, you're either a fan of this art or you aren't, but I personally enjoy anime art, and while there weren't a ton of different arenas, they all present well and the action feels fluid on the PlayStation 5. I didn't notice any real technical issues with the frame rate staying smooth, it was 60 for pretty much all of the time as far as I could tell, and the visual novel segments, while boring and drawn out, look attractive enough. Sound design is also more of what you would expect. You can change some of the arena voices, which is nice, and the soundtrack features plenty of quirky synths, pounding kick drums, and soaring guitars. It's pretty dang good in my opinion. But in the end, Alice Gear is not really a poorly made game, I just found that the fun ran dry pretty quickly, at least in single player. Even with the customizable options, the combat just isn't all that engaging or interesting, even though there is a lot to be unlocked. It's a decent game to dip into here or there and turn your brain off for a while, but don't expect a compelling experience, and it might end up collecting dust pretty quickly if the online can't take off.